all right good evening and welcome to master talker online class in today's video we'll be talking about alternating current all right so right <clears throat> but please if today is your first day of watching our video please click the subscribe button so that anytime we drop this kind of video youtube will notify you all right all right alternating current slash voltage is that which varies sinusoidally or periodically in such a way as to reverse its directional so direction periodically right alternating currents are produced by time impedance alternating voltage so they can ask you um uh what is being produced what produces alternating current you tell them that what alternating currents are produced by time impedance alternating voltage all right so ac circuit a circuit through which alternating current flows all right so we need to know some and ac circuit are represented by alternating current i is equal to what i not sine theta all right then for the voltage you have that v is equal to what v not sine theta okay but don't forget that theta is equal to your phase angle phase angle all right and this phase angle theta is equal to what? Omega t. Omega t. And what is your omega? Don't forget that omega is same as what? 2 pi f. So therefore, my i is equal to what? i naught sine what? Omega t. Okay? Which is what? My i is equal to what? i naught sine 2 pi f t. So the same thing is applicable this side as well. So I'll have that what? That my V is equal to what? V not sine omega t. Okay? So my V is equal to what? V not sine 2 pi f t. Okay? So you now have that your, your, your I is equal to instantaneous uh, current. All right? This is equal to instantaneous instantaneous current at instantaneous current at at a time t right then i naught is equal to what uh, maximum or peak value current maximum maximum or peak peak value current right then your w is equal to what omega and your omega is what your angular velocity this is your angular velocity okay then your f is frequency then your t is the time okay don't forget that your your theta which is w2 is called the what the phase angle all right so now let's talk about the the graphical representation of that graphical representation graphical representation now for the graphical representation the first one is um if we plot a graph of if we plot a graph of um i the current against time okay it moves like a wave all right time in seconds then i in ampere okay so that's the first one now the second one is if we plot a graph of if we plot a graph of um v against t v against t v in volts against t in seconds it moves like a wave as well right then the next one is um if we now plot um then if you combine the two of them you combine the two of them then maybe i or v against t so it's going to move like this then this one still move the same way okay 
So, sorry, they they meet somewhere like this. Uh -huh. So, you can draw this. Then the last one is um. And don't forget that all this the all this maximum point. This maximum point is called your your I naught. This maximum point is called your I naught. This is your V naught, right? So and so on and so forth. So now let's talk about the the peak or root mean square. The root mean square value. The root mean square. <clears throat> The root mean square. That is R M S. Okay. The root mean square. The root mean square. The formula is very, very simple. So you write for me. Alright. The root mean square of an AC is the direct current. The direct current. The direct current heat per second. In a given resistor, so but it has a formula that I don't know this definition. I'm not not good at that. I'm not familiar with that. Let's just solve. So the root mean square is equal to what your peak value all over what root two. As simple as that. Your peak value all over what root two. Then for voltage, V R M S is equal to what your peak value voltage all over what root two. Okay, it's very very simple. So let us have some calculations. Let's have some calculations. The first one they say find the first question said find the peak. Example one said find find the peak value of a sinusoidal. Sinusoidal current when when the root mean square root mean square of the current is ten ampere. Okay, solution. Now, what did they say we should find? We should find the peak value. So the peak value is your I naught. So they say I should find my I naught is unknown, but they gave me that the root mean RMS is what? 10 ampere. But I know a formula they say that IRMS is equal to what? I naught over what? Root 2. So if I make I naught subject of formula, it will not be what? IRMS times what? Times root 2, which is what? 10 times root 2, which is 10 root 2 ampere. Very, very simple. 10 root 2 ampere. So the next question, question number 2. Question number two said, what is the root mean square value of an alternating voltage with, with peak value of 120 volt right this is very simple solution we tell them again that v r m s is equal to what v naught all over what root 2 which is what 120 all over what root 2 which is what 120 over root 2 times root 2 over root 2 because we don't leave so at the denominator so we are going to have 120 root 2 over 2 which is what 60 root 2 volt all right 60 root 2 volt is the answer the next question very very simple okay so the next question here said number three said what what okay sorry when when the root mean square voltage of a source source of electricity electricity supply 
is given given as 240 volts all right then they now say calculate the peak the peak value of the supply okay so this is very very simple solution what do you tell them you tell them that what your vrms is equal to what v naught all over root 2 so they're asking me v naught which is what vrms times root 2 which is what 240 times root 2 which is a uh, 240 root 2 in what in volt very very simple so the next one right so the next one said number four said calculate the instantaneous value of a current of a current if of a current okay if in a circuit it has a root mean square value of 220 ampere when the phase angle is 30 degrees solution now what do we do let's say we should calculate they give us anytime you are giving um you are giving okay they give us that what v r, r m s as what 220 ampere and they gave us the phase angle theta to be 30 degrees right they said you calculate the instantaneous um instantaneous this uh what is it called instantaneous current is it v sorry they gave me i so i know that i is equal to the instantaneous current is equal to what i naught sine theta is it not true so first of all i need my i naught so but i know that my i naught is equal to what i uh r m s root 2 is it not true so which will give you what 220 root 2 so if you now put it here you're going to have 220 root 2 ampere sine 30 which is what 220 root 2 times 1 over 2 which is what 110 root 2 ampere very very simple 110 root 2 ampere All right so the next question question number five Question number five said, an AC describing a sinusoidal wave, wave pattern in a current, sorry, in a circuit has has peak value of the potential difference as 180 volts they now say what is the instantaneous what is the instantaneous potential difference when it has when it has reached when it has reached 1 over 80th of the circle. Okay? It has reached 1 over 80th, 1 over 8 of the circle. Solution. So what do you do? Now, for the angle theta, the angle theta is 1 over 8 times uh, angle of a circle is 360. So times 360 over 1, which will give you, um, what do we have? If you divide that, you're going to have 45. 45 degrees as my theta so but they gave me that what that the peak value so a uh, uh, v naught they gave me my v naught my v naught they gave me is equal to 180 volts so therefore my v is equal to v naught 
sine theta, which is what? 180 times sine 45. Sine 45, which is what? 180 times what? Root 2 over 2, which is um, 90 root 2 volts. 90 root 2 volts. All right? So now let's move to um, AC current. Sorry, AC circuit containing a resistor only. Okay? We are moving. The next one I want to talk about is AC circuit containing a resistor only. But before that, you need to know what a phase is. Okay? A phase is the state of vibration of a periodically uh, varying system at a particular time. Right? A phase is the state of variation of a periodically varying system at a particular time time right so let's talk about the ac circuit containing only resistor all right so ac circuit containing only resistor ac circuit containing a resistor only resistor only okay now, let's know what happens when an AC contains only a resistor. All right. For a purely resistive circuit, that is a circuit containing a resistor only, both the current and the voltage are in phase. All right. That is, none is leading and none is lagging. Okay. They are in phase. That is, they move at the same sp speed, something like that. Okay. So, there are, um, they are in phase because, uh, here here they reach their maximum or minimum and zero level at the same time as shown below okay so whenever they are so we have this let us draw that we have this now so we have that this is my uh this is my v or i okay then my i moves this way then my v follows as well okay so i have this the highest point here v0 the highest point here i0 right so um note the phase angle here is zero since none is leading and none is lagging so whenever we have only resistor then the phase angle is zero. So at this point, my theta is zero since none is leading and none is um, lagging. All right. So write that the phase diagram is shown below. Look at the phase diagram here. We have this as the phase diagram. So this is the volt voltage voltage. All right. Measure the volt and then current measured in what ampere all right okay so now the the circuit diagram is given below now look at the circuit diagram here this is the circuit diagram i have only a resistor this is a symbol for resistor r right and then i have um I have my F here, and I have that the current I is moving here. Okay, so in this part we have that our Z is equal to what um, is equal to the square root of R because it's just one R squared, which is equal to what R. Okay, where Z is equal to your impedance. Z is equal to impedance. Z is equal to what impedance. Okay. Impedance and don't forget that what um, I is equal to what I'm uh, sorry, V is equal to IR. Don't forget this formula for current that V is equal to what IR. Very important formula to always remember, right? So that is for uh, for AC circuit containing only resistor. So the impedance is equal to the resistor, right? So the next one we'll talk about is um. 
The next one we'll talk about is um, resistor and inductor, right? Resistor and inductor circuit, R and L circuit. Now, what is your R? Don't forget, R is resistor, Y L is known as inductor, all right? Now, I write for me, when only the resistor and the inductor, when only the resistor R and the inductor L are connected, the voltage will lead, will lead the current by a phase angle of 90 degrees or pi over 2, all right? Why the current will lag, the current will lag, okay, will lag, the current will lag in the sorry where am i the current why the current will lag the applied voltage by the same angle all right so if we have this now if we have this and then if the resistor uh, if the the circuit contains resistor and inductor then see what happened i have my voltage and or my current see what happened that the, the voltage will lead the current so the voltage will start from zero, okay? The voltage start. Don't mind my own, anyways. The voltage will start from zero, but the current will not start from zero. The current will start somewhere here, okay? The current will start somewhere here and then move, okay? So that is that. So the the, the distance from here to here is ninety. So the phase angle is ninety, right? So theta here is equal to pi over two or ninety degrees. Okay, we are still going to use uh, we are still going to use all these things in solving from in solving our question. But the major thing, look at the major thing here. Let me show you the major thing. The major thing is let us represent it. I have that this one is my resistor R, okay, and the next one is my inductor. The inductor is always like this. This is my inductor, okay, and then I have my my potential difference connected to the current passing here this is the current this is the potential difference okay so now if you look at this this is my l my inductor and this is my r so whenever there is l and r they are being represented this way um they are being represented this way we have that um okay they are being represented this way we have this For the voltage, then this one is for the resistor. For the resistor, so this is my impedance, the resultant resistor. Please, the, the impedance is always the resultant resistor or resistance. All right, that is the impedance. This is the resistor of um, the inductor, and then I have my volt here, I have my VR, and then my VL. Uh, Okay, so using Pythagoras theorem, all these things I'm doing, I'll just tell you what you need to know. Okay, you can just grab the little you can, but the main thing is we are going to use it in solving a uh, calculation. All right, so we are going to have that um, our z is equal to the square root of what uh, r squared plus xl squared. Okay, and then my v is equal to the square root of vl squared plus vr squared okay so that is that and then you should not forget that tan theta that tan theta is equal to what the xl inductor first before the resistor okay that is y first over x the inductor against the resistor so don't forget that um that v is equal to ir so don't forget that v is equal to what ir v is equal to i r okay and then v again is equal to i uh, r for the resistor so all these things will be used in calculation so and when i start using it in calculation you will now understand it very well so the next one we're talking about we're going to talk about is when it contains um capacitor okay the resistor capacitor circuit there's a capacitor now in it the resistor capacitor circuit all right here, only the resistor and a capacitor are connected. The, the current leads the applied voltage. You know, in the inductor, the voltage is the one leading. But in capacitor, 
the current is one leading by the same phase angle 90 degrees all right uh -huh. the the voltage is lagging behind here why the current is the one leading so if you draw if you draw that uh, you can you can draw the wave you can draw the wave the wave is that the current is the one starting from here so whenever you see the current starting from zero and then the voltage did not start from zero you will now know that it contains a resistor and a capacitor so the distance from here to here is 90 90 so i have that this one is my current this is my current why this is my voltage so so whenever you see that the current is leading the voltage then there is capacitor in it okay so we'll now draw the circuit if you draw the circuit we have my resistor and then i have my capacitor okay the resistor capacitor and then i have my circle here as the voltage then i have my current passing through this side this is my voltage okay now the same thing is applied here again the same thing is applied here we should know that um okay we should know that the resistor the resistance of the capacitor the resistance of the capacitor is given by one over omega c okay and what is omega c that is one over two pi fc all right if you are giving the capacitor you are going to use one over two pi fc and then you get the impedance the impedance is simply the square root of what r squared plus what xc squared so that is the impedance it's very very simple and then you should don't forget that what your v is equal to ir still don't forget that v is equal to what ir okay so don't forget that v that v is equal to what ir and v is equal to what ixc okay because this x is what the resistive capacitor the resistive capacitor and then you should always know that tan theta in fact your r is always at the denominator so you have xc over r for tan theta so the next one and then before we start solving calculation the next one here is now when it contains the three of them that is the next one when it contains the three of them when i have the resistor is there the inductor is there and the capacitor is there as a circuit okay so what happened all right ac circuit containing the resistor r the inductor l and the capacitor C is called the RLC circuit. Here, the applied voltage leads the current by a phase angle of 90 degrees. Okay? Why the current at the same time lacks the applied voltage by the same 90 degrees. Alright? So, here, look at what we have here. Here, we have, we have like this. Okay, we have that here is what VL minus VC. Very, very important. Okay, why here is your what? Your VR. Okay, this is your VR. And then for the for the resistor, this is for voltage. For the resistor, the same here. What do we have here is what? Um X L minus XC. Okay. Uh -huh. The inductor comes in before the resistor. Then I have resistor here. So, for impedance Z, my impedance Z is equal to what? The square root of R squared plus, then that XL minus XC, all squared. Okay, these formulas are very simple. I will still tell you how to remember all of them. Then for the voltage, your V is equal to what? The square root of what? VR plus squared here, plus VL minus VC, all squared. All right? So, don't forget that your V is equal to IR. Don't forget that V is equal to what? IR. Then, let us draw the circuit. If you want to draw the circuit, you are going to have that. Um, this is your resistor. Always know the sign, please. This is my resistor. And then, don't forget that inductor is always like this. Uh, this is my inductor. Then, don't forget that capacitor is the one that is like this. Like a, like a battery. So, I now have my voltage here. This is my voltage. And then, a current is passing through them. A current is passing through them. All right so that is that for that so the next thing so to get your theta don't forget that tan tan theta is equal to what the one in the r is always in the denominator so xl minus xc divided by your what 
by your R. Okay, all these things will be used in calculations. So you don't need to panic. You don't need to panic. All right. Okay. So we move. We move to the next thing. All right. Okay, so we'll take the first question. But well, before taking the question, there are things I saw here. All right, definition of terms. Let's define some terms. Definition of some terms. Okay, the first term we're going to define is what? Resistance, right? It is the opposition to the flow of an, of an AC, of an alternative current through a resistor R. Resistance is measured in ohms. Don't forget that your resistors are measured in ohms. The next thing is what? Reactance. Reactance X. This is the opposition to the flow of AC through a capacitor or inductor or both of them. That is why we have XC and XL. Okay. It is called the reactance inductor. Reactance inductor. Sorry. Reactance capacitor or reactance inductor. All right. Uh -huh. So you should take note of that. And then don't forget that for reactant induct uh, capacitor, reactant capacitor is always what one over um one over omega c, one over omega c, which is what one over two pi f c. Very very important formula to note. One over two pi f c. So where your f is frequency that is measured in hertz, and then your c is capacitor measured in farad. All right. Okay. So the next one. Uh, we we'll talk about is impedance. Impedance. This is the overall or the total opposition to the flow of AC. It is measured in ohms as well. Okay. The overall or gap adapter of them. In fact, that is called the resultant re re uh, resistor. Impedance is called the resultant resistor. So whenever an AC is containing only resistor, so impedance is equal to resistor. But if it is containing resistor and capacitor. It will now be the square root you use Pythagoras theorem. The square root of what? X resistor and capacitor. So Xc squared plus what? R squared. All right? Uh -huh. But if it is containing resistor and inductor, it will now be Z is equal to what? The square root of what? XL squared plus what? R squared. Then if it is containing the three of them, then now have that Z is equal to what? The square root of what? XL minus Xc all squared then plus what your r squared so the l must come before the inductor must come before the capacitor these formulas are very very important for you to note and don't forget that your impedance is, uh, is a resistor so it is measured in what in ohms this is uh how we the symbol for ohms okay so the next thing we'll talk about is um the power in an ac circuit then after that we will now solve calculations the power in an ac circuit okay but before the power in an ac circuit okay maybe we'll just solve that the power in an ac circuit then we we forge ahead to what we need okay So the power in an AC circuit. I want us to okay. Now, first of all, let us know the application of um, uh, resonance. Application of resonance. It is used in turning amplifier, turning the radio reverse uh, receiver, and turning the television. Okay, all those ones are little little calculation, a little little definition that you need to understand. So another very important thing we should take note of for is um. The power of an AC circuit. So the power of an AC circuit is given by
the power of an AC. I just want to drop the whole formula, then we start solving questions. So the power, power of an AC circuit. Right? Okay. All right. The power in an AC circuit is only dissipated in the in a resistor R such that the power observed sorry absorbed comma lost or dissipated is given by the power in an ac circuit is given by i squared r i squared r okay measured in watts measured in watts or you equally say that the power is equal to what i v cos theta i v cos theta where p is equal to the what the average power or the sim uh, the simply power dissipated in the circuit or the power loss in the circuit to find power loss or the average power dissipated in the circuit we use this or this okay so any of this is the formula to use in calculating the power dissipated by an ac circuit but don't forget that, that your v is equal to ir do you forget v is equal to ir so if you remove um one of the i here and r that is how we got our iv is it not true but you put if there's an if, if there's a phase angle you will now say um iv cos theta so that is that so we'll now start solving calculations involving um ac circuit calculations that are involving an alternating current circuit let me check my time okay so maybe the calculation will start from the next video so thank you very much for watching. Please master the formulas and then in the next video, we watch the, the calculations. Bye-bye.